Hi, Ghosty fam. Welcome back. Uh, we're so glad that you're joining us today at the Activity Continues podcast. If you're new here and this is your first episode, welcome. We are friends and soul sisters who recap episodes of the TV show, The Dead Files. Uh, we also talk about other creepy shit as well as mundane stuff about our lives. It's really just a gab fest. And mm -hmm. then, you know, we uh, we go and talk about episodes. Yeah. And I'm Megan. And I'm Amy. Thanks for joining us again if you've been here before. This week, Megan is recapping the Dead Files episode called The Darkening. And it's from season six, episode five. And it originally aired April 30th, 2016. So do you want to tell the friends how you picked this one? I did. You know, normally it's um, A-L-E-X-A where I just am like, right. hey. Oh, I got to unplug uh, her. Thank you. Uh, I'm like, hey, give me two numbers. But this time I was going through season six and I noticed that one of them was in Wausau, Wisconsin, this one. And I went to school in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. I went to college there. And so Wausau was like the place you went to because it was like 30 minutes away. So, you know, as poor college kids could get there mm -hmm. and back in a day, it's a good little break from studying. They had kind of a good mall. And so, you know, that was where we went. Cool. Cool. All right. So, so Yeah. Cool. I'm looking forward to it. Actually, it's I did watch one. this one. This one? <clears throat> I mean, I rewatched me. it. I cried. Oh, I, I cried, cried too. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. This, the was... man, Clayton, mm -hmm. bless his heart. And I it's know. so funny, and we'll get into it, but, you know, he's bald with some facial hair mm -hmm. and, like, um, gauged earrings, you know, so you'd mm -hmm. think he'd be, like, this big tough guy. Mm -hmm. He is so Softy. torn up about this. Just yes. a big old teddy bear. Yeah. He is. Oh. The reveal is one of the few reveals that I actually cried in. Yeah, I've cried in a couple, but yeah. The other one that really, really got me was um, the one with the woman whose husband passed away and she yep. made Amy Allen cry. Yep. And yep. then she's like, I made Amy Allen cry. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That was a, oh. That, yeah. I'm starting to tear up just thinking about that yep. one. Let's move on. If I ever need to be an actor and I need to cry in a scene, all I have to do is think about that episode. Yes. And I'm a puddle. Because she was... Oh, bless her heart. Yeah. She was really going through it. I would love to know how she's doing now. Yeah. Lady from that episode, you know who I'm talking about, I hope. <laughs> if you're out there, <laughs> give us a jingle. Call us. <clears throat> DM us, Amy, and yeah. you know she'll do all the socials at, at the end. Yeah. I think we need to move on to the yes. subject um, that you just like in passing, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to set up some D&D &D stuff, blah, blah, blah. I don't like, whoa, whoa, whoa what? I legit thought that I was, I talked to you about this. No. So I'd been toying with the idea for a little bit of starting D and D stands for Dungeons and Dragons for people who aren't hip. Like I am <laughs> um, just kidding. I just you mean learned people that aren't nerds. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, and so I'm like, like I was kind of looking into it and I'm like, this actually sounds like a game I would really, really enjoy because Basically, from what I understand, and I've only been like researching this for like a week, so if I'm wrong, I'm not trying to offend anybody. <laughs> Please educate me. Mm -hmm. But essentially, so you play with friends, you choose your character, you can be like an elf, you can be like a, um, a wizard, a human, all of this, and then you just go on adventures with people. And so it's like there's a world that the dungeon master either creates or plays and like you have a, a goal. So like, let's say your goal is to, I don't know, we'll Super Mario it and rescue the princess. Okay, that's your goal. <laughs> so then along the way, every time you encounter something, like you have to decide what action you want to do and then you roll a dice for it. So let's say you're walking in the woods and you encounter a dog. If you pet the dog, you have to make that an action. Do you run away from the dog? Do you try to make the dog your pet? Do you fight the dog? That's do you... You know, so it's like the the cool thing about it is that it seems super fluid. Like you and I could play the exact same world, the exact same time and have two completely different experiences. Mm -hmm. It's not the same as like Monopoly where you start out, you have, you know, which don't get me wrong, I love Monopoly. <laughs> but um, I just feel like this is like something really up my alley because I'm super creative. Mm -hmm. I'm super imaginative, mm -hmm. like going into another world. That's like my jam, like yeah. reading all of that. And so yeah. I got um, John's friend and his brother are would be into it. And so John's friend is the dungeon master. And we were going to get together yesterday and create our characters. But of course, I got the plague. Mm -hmm. um, and so we didn't. But so I was really disappointed about that. Um, 
But I talked to John's friend on the phone today and we kind of were setting up a, a couple of ideas. And so I'm really, really excited. Cool. Yeah. So when are you going to so, do that? Well, I think next week we're going to get together and create our character. And they do give you, like, I bought a kit off of Amazon. It's like the D&D starter kit. It comes with all the, like, a bunch of die rule books, um, the playbook, and it comes with a playable world. And it gives you characters that are, like, kind of pre-started for you. Okay. But I think I'm going to not do that. And I think yeah. I'm just going to build my character from the ground up. And to do that, like, you roll, like... For mm. the, the ability of strength, like your role for that. She's okay. going to be an elf. I know that. Okay. And I want her to be super aloof because I'm like super friendly. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I want to do something I would never do. Okay. You know, like I would never be aloof. I would never be a bitch. If I am, it's unintentional. <laughs> so I, I just, I'm really, really excited for it. Good. Oh, that sounds fun. So we're going to, I think, get together next weekend. And then our first um, game, like dry run of a game, is going to be February 4th. Okay. So stay tuned. But Stay I'm, tuned. I honestly thought I had told you about it. No, so that's <laughs> why I just like cavalierly threw that card <laughs> And you were like, um, uh, Andy, uh, what? <laughs> and like, do you mean like Dungeons and Dragons? Yes. Do you mean? I know. <clears throat> I know. And I told my friend that. And she, I was on the phone with her. And then she, like, it was silent. And I'm like, hello. And she goes, I'm sorry I had to put you on mute to laugh at you. And I'm like, that's fair. <laughs> I'm like, I appreciate the mute. I appreciate the mute. <laughs> and that you didn't laugh in my face. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But, I love it. And then I, at work, I was talking and I found out that like three people I work with are big into D&D. One of them, she's like, I went over to talk to her and she brought out her dice and she's like, you always got to have die. You never know. And I'm oh like, my gosh. Yeah. So I like that it's, I'm hoping that it's kind of like less stigmatized now. Like, you know. You think about D and D, and it's like, oh, you guys, you know, are virgins. You've never touched a woman, blah mm -hmm. blah blah. And I'm really, you know, I'm I'm trying to get away from that. Yeah. Because it, it's just an RPG, you know, yeah. like you, it's, it's I mean, a way it's, to it, escape for two, three, four hours. Yeah. It's uh, it's I think a lot more people are doing it now than like back in the day when it yeah. was. Because I I have a friend who is like, big time mm -hmm. D and D. Like he's done. He creates all the worlds and he runs the games and wow. everything. Yeah. And he makes um, he makes little figurines, figurines. and paints some and everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the whole thing. A lot so. of – I joined a Facebook group and a mm -hmm. lot of people do that. They make mm -hmm. their own D&D &D figurines and mm -hmm. paint them and then they play mm -hmm. with them. And, like, go on. Like, yeah. you know, it's not hurting anybody. Right. There's a lot and worse things a person could do with their time. You know, exactly. And I, I thought, you know, this is something John and I can do together. For a couple of hours, you know, we'll have to have the the little one go stay with grandpa and grandma. Yeah. But this would be a way to be John and Megan the couple instead of John and Megan mom and dad. Yeah. And so. Yeah. That's a good yeah, idea. I'm really excited. Cool. So that's what's that. Cool, cool. Love it. Uh, what about you? What's new with you? What's new with me? <laughs> <laughs> I had to do the witch work workshop um, that one. <laughs> we're, we're still watching Top Chef, and we just finished one of the. Uh, we just finished season six, six, mm -hmm. six, and one of the guys on there, his name is Angelo, and he would always say he was he's Italian. Yeah. He's Italian and Dominican. I never would have gotten that. From I know, right? Angelo, shocked. Angelo Sosa, and <laughs> he would every time he would do the talk to the camera thing, he would say, "To be honest with you." And it was always, well, you know, I da, 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 to be honest with you. <laughs> so that made me think of that. Um, yeah, so we're still watching Top Chef. We just started Top Chef All Stars. No, Masters. Mm -hmm. Masters. Mm -hmm. So it's like the big time chefs, not like regular like, normal people, like restaurant actual chefs, chefs, not but like, like amateur, people you've heard yeah. of. Yeah. You know? And so, nice. and that was, that was when the, when the whole show kind of flipped and became, what it is today, which is more like ev everybody that's on it is like, I want to win because I'm the best one, not I'm going to win for turning off someone else's oven or stealing mm -hmm. someone's pee puree. Which um, I hate because yeah. that's not winning. That's no. sabotaging somebody else. Exactly. And then that's you didn't honest. really win. No, because if you would have given them the pee puree, mm -hmm. their dish could have been better than yours. Yep. I and hate it, it when they do that. Yeah. It would have been. Because in that in that specific, there was this, the whole episode, the whole, whole season, um, I don't mean the whole episode. The whole season six, once the pee puree incident happened, that's all everybody talked about. 
One mm-hmm. guy stole the other guy's pee puree, and then he won the dish. And how can you feel good about that win? He's because he was, you cheated. He was a tool. He, he sounds like a tool, big old so, tool, and not tool. a pureeing tool. No, <laughs> like a useless tool. A useless tool. A unitasker. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like a tool nobody so, needs. Right. But so this Top Chef Masters is all like, oh, I have a couple extra minutes, and I see that guy's in trouble. I'm gonna go help him. That's and it was why so I love refreshing. Great British Baking Show. Yes. Oh, they're so nice on that show. Oh, yeah. That's so that great. But of, that's how you. That's how know. it should be. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah, I have two minutes. I'm gonna go help somebody so that if I do win, I know that it's because I'm purely the better chef. Yeah. And not because I sabotage somebody. Well, and I don't think most of these people cared about winning t- because they're the best. They just wanted to win. They mm-hmm. wanted the hundred thousand dollars. They don't give a shit if they're actually the best chef or not. Yeah. And especially when you get to that level, like you already are the best chef. Like, you know that. Yeah. Not the best, but you're a really fucking good chef. Yeah. And a lot of these people are really fucking good. Yeah. But, um, and, and it, it yeah. So after, after masters and, and when the, the adults <laughs> were playing and they actually played <laughs> fairly, the I think up. after that, it was, um, the seasons after that, the regular Top Chef contestants or the mm-hmm. Chef Testants, as they called them, love um, it. I, I love you. that. <laughs> they would. Um, they started. I think they kind of learned from that, or maybe they were told, "Quit fucking around." But um, the the seasons got better after okay. that. Good. But anyway, that's what we're doing. And then we just oh, also fun. finished um, Slow Horses. Never. Heard it's of a it. show on Apple TV. Mm-hmm. It's Gary Oldman. He's oh, and Kristen Scott Thomas is in How it does too. That name sound familiar. She was in the English Patient, which oh. I didn't see, but that's what made her famous. You'll mm-hmm. you'll know her face when you I, see her. Yeah. Um, and it's so Gary Oldman runs a, an office of spies, and she runs like the big office of spies. It's British. Mm-hmm. And is Gary MI5. Oldman British? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah. Learn something new every day. Yeah, well, he's been in so many gazillion things, and he has a thousand different accents. So you know, you you wouldn't really know that. Necessarily. Let me look him up because I feel like I know who you're talking about, but I'm I'm a very visual person. Yeah. Okay. Look up Kristen Scott Thomas while you're at it, or just look oh, up Slow yeah. Horses. Okay. <laughs> and then you'll see. So anyway, she she runs MI5, or she's second desk at MI5, and then he kind of report Gary Oldman kind of reports to her, and he's got this little group of spies that have been. They've done something wrong at work in some way or another, and they get sent to. Okay, this, so he's like the this punished yes. department. Like you yes. piss someone off, yeah. we're gonna send you here. Exactly. Okay. exactly. Or Gary. I know. Give him a and break. And so he runs that. He runs that department, and he's he is hilarious. I mean, it's not a comedy, <laughs> yeah. but he is so like. At one point, he says to one of his agents who figured something out, he's like, "Well, obviously they wanted you to figure it out because if they wanted to keep it hidden, you would never have found it." You know that kind of thing, <laughs> yeah. So like just um, super shade. I yeah. love it. Oh yeah, I love it. You you probably really like the show. It's good. It's very dark. You really have to pay attention. You can't play on your phone, which is a problem for me. I was just gonna say that seems like something you because you're always like you watch TV and you play on your phone. Yeah, like I you do. do stuff for work or the podcast. Yeah, yep. I usually have to be doing something when I'm watching, but but not. Not with this one. Nope. I had to put my phone down and just pay attention, which was a little bit of a struggle, but it was only an hour. We usually I watch two at a time though. Yeah. But it was good. I'm sure I missed some stuff. I don't know that I'm smart enough to really catch everything, but it was really good. And two seasons and there's going to be a third. Um, so that's that's my TV recommendation. Nice. I really liked it. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. Well, oh, and anything uh, else? Our videos are now on Spotify. Spotify. I mean, you know, our sh- our show has been on Spotify since the beginning, right? But um, they just recently put out whatever part of their platform is that they do video versions, and I only know this because somebody who had expressed an interest on being on our show, uh, he was on someone else's show, and mm-hmm. it was a I saw like a tweet from him, and it was a a video podcast on Spotify, and I'm like, I didn't know they did video, so yeah, I looked like, into hold it. Hold up, Spotify. Yeah. So I looked into it and found that, yes, they do. And um, so I got us up there. And now I'm just in the process of going through all the old videos and putting them up. Okay. And as we do the new videos, I will put those up automatically. But the later stuff is going to take some time to get those up. Yeah. 
And then we have two new YouTube subscribers. Not the dog? In not, addition not, to the dog? Yeah, in addition to the dog. We have deaf ghost hunters. <gasps> Yay! Which really are deaf guys that do ghost hunting. I love it. And ghost cards, 78. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. welcome. And then um, just a little bit of a teaser here for Ooh. something that's going to come up in the next maybe six months, four or five, six months. I found on Instagram a post where this person said, I had a weird thing that I did this week. I was a sketch artist for the Dead Files. <gasps> and so I reached out to them and said, hey, we do this show. Would you like to come on and talk about your experience? And they do want to come on, and but they can't say anything about the episode until it airs. And it is season 15. That's the next one coming up. Mm -hmm. Season 15, episode 13. So it's going to be at the end of the yeah. run. So, so probably it's probably going to be a bit. Yeah. Yeah. He did say that he thought it would be airing in four to five months. Okay. So if you figure that and how many episodes, 13 episodes, one a week, and you go back to that, you can probably figure out <laughs> if you're smart. I can't. Um when yeah. when it would start when yeah. when the new season will be starting but i gotta say it's driving me nuts on these facebook groups where people are like there's no more there's no more dead files it's done blah 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 and we're like no it's no. Gonna, there's one more season for sure there might be more after that mm -hmm. and then everybody's saying well no it's going to be done after that because amy doesn't want to do it anymore well guess what amy's not the only medium in the world right she's the bestest she's but... my favorite yeah She's but not the only one. She's not the only one. So what's to say that they're not um, going to just pick someone new? I don't know. I wonder. Anyway. I know this is not the same, and we got to get to the episode, but um, I wonder how mediums feel about Gary Spivey. Gary Spivey? Haven't Who's you ever that? heard of Gary Spivey? I don't think so. He comes Who's on, he comes on um, KDWB all the time. Oh, I don't listen to Gary Spivey. commercial radio, so I don't oh. know. Um, His name sounds kind of familiar, though. Is he local? Uh, I don't think he's local, but he's been around for a long, long time. He's got really wacky hair. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, just Google Gary Spivey, okay. S-P-I-V-E-Y, um, and you will know him as soon as you see him. Oh. Hair. Okay, so he's wearing basically a... Uh, White. Coconut, wig. a coconut uh, cupcake hostess <laughs> cup cook. What do they call those? Snowballs. Snowball. Yeah. Snowball oh, that's on his one. head. That's what yes, it looks like is. to me. Yes, yeah. Yes, okay. Yes. No, I don't think that I know him. I, oh, no. But he comes you know, on KDW. I'm a little intrigued. Yeah. Oh my God. <sighs> is that a All hat right. or is that supposed to be hair? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Well, I'm moving sure. right along. Moving on. Should we just dive on Let's in? Let's just jump right in after 40 30 minutes. minutes. I don't know. How long <laughs> has it been? All righty. All right, let's so, go. So we're in Wausau. Steve and Beth. So Beth is the homeowner, and she is going blind. She's been going blind since she was five years old. She has a um, degenerative eye disease, mm -hmm. um, and it's just been slowly going, you know, making her blind. He asked, Steve asks if she can see him. And she said, well, I can see that your clothes are dark, but you can't really see details. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, Steve asks her, well, how long until you're completely blind? And she says a couple of months. So oh, can you imagine? No, I mean, that's so quick. Think mm -hmm. about what you did two months ago. And it seems like yesterday. Yep. And that's and all then, the time you have left to see things. And they have four kids. So she's got Jeanette, who's 16. She has these, uh, I believe these are with Clayton, her fiance. Mm -hmm. We have Jeanette, who's 16. Mitchell's 14. Kaylee is seven. And Clayton Jr. is six. Mm -hmm. So imagine not being able to see your kids. That's yeah. just, bless her. So, I mean, that's one of the reasons I think that Steve was really drawn to this case. That and the kids, you know, kids are a soft spot for him. Yeah, yeah. So they bought this place. They moved in four months ago. And she said the last two places they were at got really intense. And it's happened everywhere they've lived. And the they're a little, you know, they're kind of quote unquote trapped here because they bought it. They can't just up and leave mm -hmm. like they did the last couple places. Mm -hmm. um, so like I said, it's her and her fiance, Clayton, and then their four kids. Um, Steve asks what kind of activity they hear. And she said, we'll hear stomping, 
walking up and down the stairs, you know, see dark shadows. We hear voices. She said, you feel like you're being watched 24 seven. And she said, it's physical. Now people are being grabbed and poked and, you know, it's just not good. Mm -hmm. She said, they all sleep in the living room. Nobody wants to sleep in their room. So at night they will move the the like coffee table out of the way and just make a big big sleeping area sleeping bag on the floor yeah. puppies on you know pile of puppies because they're just so scared oh <laughs> she said she's scared to death of her bedroom um and steve's like well does it help to sleep together and she said honestly no she said she feels drained she feels tired and she said the kids are complaining about stomach aches and headaches <laughs> and you know steve is like well you know you're handling this really well and she said well i have to keep my composure for the kids <laughs> And Steve says, you know, you're allowed to break down once in a while. This episode, <laughs> Steve like tugged at the heartstrings. Oh my God. I I for me too. Yeah. He I was, cried a couple of You can was, tell he really loved this family. He did. And yeah. he he did. And he was really getting pissed off about yeah. the ghosts and what they were doing. Because he was very protective of them. He was. And it was just so oh. It was really sweet. Steve, I love you so much. Yeah. So we go up to the master bedroom and again, you know, Steve is like, you don't use this room and it doesn't look like they use it. There's kind of mm -hmm. boxes everywhere. They've kind of turned it into almost a storage place. Mm -hmm. And um, she goes, you know, you hear people walking back and forth upstairs when everyone is asleep. And Steve goes, you got four kids. Could it be the kids? They sleepwalk. <laughs> and she's like, no, they don't sleepwalk. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, you know, I see lots of shadows. And Steve, I, I don't blame him for saying this. He's like, not to be a dick, but, you know, you are going blind. Could it be some shadows from your losing yeah. your sight? And she said, no, because everybody else sees them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, you know, he had to ask it. And it's yeah. a valid question. Yeah, he had to because everybody at home would be asking. Right. And yeah. Going, how come Steve didn't ask? How come Steve didn't ask? Um, so then we interview Jeanette, the oldest daughter, and this is neither here nor there, but she had the cutest dress on. I thought that too. Oh my God. It was, I was going to text you like, about her dress. It was strapless so dress. Maybe goes to her knee lace overlay. It was so cute. It was oh kind of vintagey looking yes! and it was a pretty like, like a coral, color. like yeah. a coral pink. Yeah. yeah. Very 1950s. Like yeah. you put on really a petticoat cute. girl and you are ready to go. Yeah. Oh my God. It was, it was so super cute. cute some kitten heels boom out the door <laughs> um so you know we're interviewing Jeanette again she's the oldest daughter she's 16 Steve said that um Beth relies on her a lot um because she's Beth's second eyes and you know mm -hmm. she's the oldest that's just kind of the role that she's taken on mm -hmm. she says she sees a tall black figure that looks like a human but it's just a shadow Steve asks if it's male or female and she instantly says male like no hesitation mm -hmm. She said it happened just yesterday. She said she was going to sleep. She got the feeling of being watched, turned around, and there was a black figure in her front of her door. Um, she screamed and ran downstairs, to which I said, if you were going to sleep upstairs, I thought everybody slept downstairs together. Hmm. So that kind maybe of Maybe she was just trying it out. Or maybe she was just taking a nap or something. I don't know. <laughs> so then she said... Sorry. Um, she'll wake up in the morning and she has bruises. And she said she woke up with one this morning <clears throat> and she showed bruise to Steve on her calf. Uh, she showed Steve <laughs> the bruise on her calf. And it was, a, I mean, it was probably the size of a quarter. Yeah. And Steve was like, well, sweetie, you know, you could have iron deficiency. Like there's many reasons for the bruise. And I'm could like, it be the dogs? True. It's not the dogs. Steve. They must not have dogs because he didn't ask. He never asked about the dogs. <laughs> yeah. They don't have dogs. Dogs. I would imagine not because they lived in a rentals and it's really tough mm, to have dogs yeah. in rental with four kids. Right. But you never know. Yep. Um, she said it's really hard to sleep. And when she sleeps, she has really horrible nightmares, which that made me think of you when you're you were talking last week about yeah, your my Middle your, East. Yeah, your Middle East stuff with uh not being able to sleep with oh them my when God. you did horrible, horrible nightmares. Terrifying. Terrifying. Yes. Aren't you curious what was going on in your place? I, I mean, now I that you're am, out, <laughs> it'd be nice to I, know, I think. Yeah, I honestly think something was in that place yeah, yeah. because all of my dreams were always like real life. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it was always like something was coming in through the door or like I would close the door and then I'd wake up and the cats would be inside the door. And I did not open the door to let mm. the cats in. So because I had two cats over there. 
-hmm. So how did the cats get in the door? And the cats would always like go from a dead sleep and they'd wake up and they'd look always in the same Ugh. spot in the bathroom. I swear to God, cats do that just to fuck with you. They're dicks. I've had cats do that too. Um, so anyway, now we get to Kaylee and Clayton Jr. So Kaylee is seven and Kate Clayton Jr. is six. Kaylee says she was upstairs in her bedroom and she saw somebody looking through the window and she thinks it was a man. And Steve asks, was it a man like me, an older man, a white man? And Kaylee says he was all black. And then Clayton says he saw downstairs in the window in the kitchen, he saw a black man. He scared Clayton. Um, and then Clayton says when he was asleep, he was getting poked. And Steve put his hand out and said, show me how, you were po how he was poking <laughs> me, how he was poking you. And Steve is just so good with the kids, yeah, you know? He like he, I mean, he's so good with everybody, but especially with the kids, he really like doesn't talk down to them, doesn't mm -hmm. condescend them. He like levels with them, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. It's just so, I loved every part of this episode. It this was just really so one. sweet. Mm -hmm. And he asked if they like living there and they said, no, we neither we really. really don't. And then we meet Clayton, Beth's fiance. And this is where the heart really, like, he, I mean, he was crying from the get-go. Yeah. Tearing up. He was like, he was. I'm and his voice about. was breaking so much they had to do captions. Yes. Because you yes. couldn't tell what he was saying. Because he was so Broke emotional. Because yeah. he just was so worried about his family. Mm -hmm. And he said, this is our final spot. I want this to be our home. Mm -hmm. Clayton. I know. I want it to be our home too. Mm -hmm. And he said he's so worried about somebody getting hurt. He said he was sitting. So Steve asked him, you know, what kind of experiences you've had. And he said he was sitting down watching TV, just sitting in his chair. And he said something walked right past him. He said it was tall, about six feet, dark in the middle with a light glow around it. So he got out of his chair and walked into the kitchen, walked in the garage. There was nobody there. He said this was shortly after his brother died. He said he mm -hmm. lost his mother and his brother very close together. And then he really starts to cry. And he says he's lost fa nine family members mm -hmm. in two years. Isn't that nuts? I mean, is this is like the Banshee stuff from mm -hmm. <laughs> last it is week. The that, yeah. Even though they're there wasn't a banshee last week it just um they just thought it was but but yeah it sounds like mm -hmm. like something like that yeah well we we get to it a little bit mm -hmm. um and then he's he thought the shadow person could be one of his family members you mm -hmm. know um he he's just so emotional and steve is like it's okay like this is why we're here he puts his hand on his shoulder gives him a hug I think he even gave big. him a hanky because he had a hanky that he <laughs> oh, was using. He? <laughs> yeah, he had a white hanky. He just gave him a big bear hug. And you yeah. know, he just smells like cologne and cigars. <laughs> I know I say this every time. Megan's fantasizing a little bit. I am. I just need a cold shower. Um, I just love Steve. So I just, he just seems like he'd be such a fun guy. Yeah. Oh, anyways. Okay, moving on. Um, so now we go and we meet local author Sean Blackshaw, and he informs us that Beth and Clayton's land used to be owned uh, home to a fly swatter factory, as one is. And Steve kind of chuckles a little when I he know. says it, but then he's I like, know. it's not funny, but. <laughs> it's not funny, but it kind of is. <laughs> so Arthur Hurd and George Wilson bought the property in 1908, and in 1910, the factory was built and then we have a, a picture of the factory so in 1911 george wilson left the company and arthur heard was kind of left in charge of it and he really struggled he didn't have the expertise that wilson had which i don't know what expertise is required to be a fly swatter factory <laughs> but maybe it's more in depth than any we kind of factory it probably takes a bit of expertise to yeah run. i mean i would think definitely some business acumen yeah um and maybe heard didn't have that i don't yeah. know you know, my, not maybe my. he was just the money guy. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And he, yeah. Anyways. Um, and then February 3rd, 1925, Heard had a heart attack at the site and passed away. Heart attack. Heart attack. Um, so then we've got uh, digging through the archives and we got a montage of, you know, he's <laughs> got a magnifying glass, Stephen. I know. <laughs> who is in the, who is in the library with a magnifying glass? <laughs> Steve, he doesn't have young eyes. <laughs> it's so funny um, some of the people that are my age or around my age or older um they 
need to put their glasses on to see things. I have mm -hmm. to take my glasses off to see things close up. I'm the opposite. Like I can't see sh like right now, the screen that I'm looking at, I'm looking at the notes I took when I was watching this. I can't huh. even read them because wow. it's all blurry. Yeah. Wow. But if I took my glasses, oh no, it's worse. But um, <laughs> oh, if I took my glasses off, oh, it's actually oh, no, it's worse. actually worse. Oh uh, shit! Yeah, I do have another pair of glasses that I usually use when I'm on the computer, but I forgot. Yeah, your cheaters, them. your reader. Yeah. You well, no, they're readers. actually regular glasses that I had. My very best eye exam and pair of glasses that I ever got was in 2014, and those glasses are still better than ten <laughs> glasses I've had between them then and now. So I, I wear those when I'm on the computer because I can see better. Children, that's how you know you get old. You have a yep. favorite pair of glasses. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. So uh, one thing we found out is there was a massive mental asylum and a poor farm operated on that land for nearly 80 years. Mm -hmm. And a poor farm, I think, is essentially a, a place where people who have debts go if they can't pay off their debts, if that's correct. Let me just and Google it. Googly, oh, we're going to Google quick. it. In the words of Jillian from True Crime Obsessed, we're going to give it a Goog. I don't even watch that show, and I always say I'm hitting the Googs. First, I okay, didn't first of all, it's, it's, it's not a show. It's a podcast. Well, it's a show. True Crime Obsessed? Yeah, it's a show. But you don't watch the show. Oh, did I say watch? You did. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Listen to the show. <laughs> What's your podcast? Can I watch it? What channel is it on? <laughs> it's on the, the tubes of you. It's on the, is it on the internet? It's is on the it internet. On, do I go to the internet yeah. to watch your, your podcast? <laughs> but you can watch a podcast on, the, I don't know about them. I don't know if they have a video component. Uh, they're on, they're on um, TikTok. Oh, I follow one of the ladies from one of those on TikTok. Ellen Marie Marsh. Yes. I love Ellen Marie she's hilarious. Marsh. I, and she's like in the groups that she's in, she responds to comments. Like when I was she, having my child, I commented, like, I'm in labor listening to, you know, Obsessed with Disappeared. It's getting me through it. And she commented, let's oh. see a picture of your baby when, <gasps> when they're born. Yes. Oh, I know. That's so sweet. She's the best. Did you see her? She was on um, a game show on the regular television, a real show. You know, she I was, think they just talked about that. She was on, um, it was a couple of months ago I saw it. Oh, maybe more than that now. But I was um, a construct anyway. Yeah, that's right. But she was on. She was a contestant. It was one, it was a trivia show where they all stand in a circle oh. and they all go, I don't remember the name of the show. I'll yeah. find it and pop it I in the show notes. But it was, so they, they go around asking questions and then mm -hmm. it's kind of like the weakest link. Or maybe it was mm -hmm. the weakest link. <laughs> I think it was the weakest link. The was Jane version. Lynch the show? Yes, yes. Then it was The Weakest Link. It was link, The Weakest yes. Link. Okay, got it. Oh, my God. The Weakest so Link. Funny. She was on. I and love her. Yeah, I do, too. And every fan that's met Ellen has mm -hmm. said that she is, like, the most genuinely sweetest oh, person. Good. Yeah. It's good to know. She's. I'm glad yeah. she's not a dick because I really like her. I know. I hate it when you <laughs> like someone and you find out they're dicks. I know. Like, like, I can't like you anymore. Like last week when we found out about Mr. Affleck. Not that it's a surprise. I shouldn't be surprised. No, why are you surprised? I don't know. I don't know. I had such high hopes for my movie star boyfriend, but it's okay. <laughs> I broke up with him. It's Paul Rudd now, so. Good. We're all good. good. All right. So what are we poor, Googling? Oh, we're go poor farm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's back 20 minutes ago. We talked we about. We don't have ADHD. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is a lesson in ADHD. Like they should play it. In yeah. psychology classes. Yeah, they should. Anyway, a poor house or workhouse is a government-run facility to support and provide housing for the dependent or needy. Oh, so it's like a shelter. Yeah. It's a, a but a well, shitty one. Well, that's that's a poor house, but then I also see a poor farm. Poor a farm, farm. That's what this is. Yeah. A a farm maintained at public expense for the support and employment of needy persons. So it's kind of the oh. same thing, but it sounds like they work it. Okay. People who live their work on the so farm. it's a good concept but like many good concepts i feel like it's poorly executed yeah probably probably so anyway uh steve reached out to a local reporter who said this place was filled with quote neglect abuse and death starting in coming in hot but i feel <laughs> like when we have a mental asylum from like the olden days it's never a good thing no they they did not they warehoused people yeah they, they did, did not um 
it was not for the it was betterment a dumping of ground yes. for live bodies that yes. just weren't dead yet essentially right, right. it was so for then, just i mean in all those places because like i know yes. we talked about one that was here fairbolt and it was basically like for people that had children who were development and delayed down yep. syndrome whatever and they would just send them off there so they didn't yep. have to think about it anymore yep, yep. which Mm, great disgusting so then we get me keith reporter keith ulig i hope i'm saying that right it's u-h-l-i-g ulig mm -hmm. probably so he said the asylum was close to the property line it was built in 1893 and it was in it, it was operating for about 78 years housed up to 300 people any you know people who are schizophrenics manic depressants the elderly basically people society didn't want to deal with like mm -hmm. we said you know he said in 1950s, the superintendents came under under investigation by the Marathon County DA for several issues. And when I was watching this, I was like, Marathon County, that sounds familiar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I wait, know that. I am familiar with, with Wausau, with Wisconsin. This area. <laughs> Smart in other ways. Um, <laughs> so they came under investigation for several issues, including... Um, overcrowding conditions, limited staffing, um, and it came out that there were hundreds of people at this location. Remember, he said up to 300 people. Mm -hmm. They had four bathtubs. Mm -hmm. Four. That's disgusting. For hundreds of people. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So they said there were five unusual deaths. Now, I know I'm not a math person. <laughs> I had a problem with this too. <laughs> but I'm like, this, my math ain't mathin'. The no. math ain't mathin'. Mm -mm. No. So the first death is in 1895 where an inmate hung himself. That's mm -hmm. all we get on that. Yeah. And I don't want to be rude, but I mean, not, not, I'm not discounting this person's death, but that doesn't seem unusual to be in an asylum no, where the living conditions were probably shit. Yeah. Four bathtubs for hundreds of people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm honestly I mean, surprised it's not more than that. And they the did one. say, um, and we talk about that a little bit later, he said that towards the end, this uh, Keith said nurses reported that they didn't even bother keeping records of people. Mm -hmm. So they said, they said once people arrived, they just expected them to be there forever until they died. Yeah. So then in 1899, three men asphyxiated while working in a silo on the farm. <sighs> so I know. So here we're at four. Mm hmm and then I, sorry to keep referencing this, but Patrick from True Crime Obsessed was saying how silos basically are quicksand. Yeah. And I didn't know that. So yeah. they, if you are in a silo, it sucks you down to the bottom. Yep. So that's probably what happened to these poor yeah, men. Yeah, it's a horrible, horrible death. Oh really, really horrible. It's, yeah, it's, it's quicksand. It's drowning, basically, or suffocating, I guess. Yeah. So then in 1903, a 37-year-old inmate was stabbed to death by an 85-year-old inmate over living quarters, to which I texted Amy and said, <laughs> if I can still stab a 37-year-old to death at 85, it's pretty good. Yeah. You're kind of winning. Guess. Yeah. You're, I mean, what's, what are they going to do? He's already in an essay in the asylum. I know. I what's know. the worst they could do? Send him to jail? That'd probably be an improvement. I know. So I know. what's that? Now we're at five, guys. Yep. That's five. five. That's five. Um, but wait, more. there's more. But wait, there's more. In 1920, <laughs> a man named John Q told nurses he was going fishing by the river. He, I don't know why they included this, but they said he had a wooden leg. Mm -hmm. um, and he took off his wooden leg, tied an anchor to his waist, and threw himself in the river. Mm -hmm. Gross. The wor that, to me, honestly, drowning is the worst way to die. I think it would be, although I've heard that it's very peaceful. But I don't know Once how anybody would know. Once you're unconscious, I'm sure it's peaceful, mm -hmm. but those two minutes or however long it takes. Where you're gasping takes, for breath. Yeah. No, mm -mm. goodbye. No, mm -mm. thank you. And then, so we're at six now, and now we're lucky <laughs> six number Six of the five deaths. Six of the five. <laughs> now we've got to seven. This is rough. Yeah. 1933, an inmate laid down on a stick of dynamite and blew himself up. Mm -hmm. What? What? That just goes, to, I mean, I feel like that goes to show you how poor the conditions were at this place. Yeah. Somebody would rather blow up yeah. than live there. Or drown in. Or yeah. drown. And, and I'm have, sure they had mental illness too. Like, I'm not saying oh, sure. that it's only sure, sure. because of that. But yeah, right. look. Um, and I have some questions. Um, why are inmates allowed access to dynamite and knives? 
and given the ability to wander off the property and drown themselves. Okay, for the <laughs> knives, I'm assuming it wasn't like a, a knife. He probably made a shank, okay. I would assume. Okay. Or maybe he uh, worked in the kitchen or something. Yeah, or he worked in the kitchen or something. Okay. Um, But why are they wandering off? Like, oh, he, I told the nurses he was scared. I'm just going to go drown myself down at the river. I mean. Well, I feel like it because it's not really a jail and maybe he was one of the less insane i don't know i don't know it's not good no so there we had seven of the five deaths we just recaptured <laughs> recapped for you key feeling he's you know he's great reporter but not yeah. so good at math you know what we all have strengths okay i, mean, I think he's talking i think he means five incidences yeah but still but still. he said five deaths yeah one two three yeah all right keith so then we go to detective greg Hagen Butcher, and what there's a name. a name for you. Yeah, that is a name. So we talk about a brutal murder because it's not a dead foul show if there's not a brutal murder. Mm -hmm. April 18th, 1966, we have Mary Holtzum. She was 26, walking home from church. She meets Eugene Schopf. Schopf? Schopf. I th Schopf. 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 Oh, maybe it is Schopf. I can't remember how they said his name. I can't either. He's 29. And it's raining that night. And so Eugene drives up alongside of her and's like, hey, Mary, do you want a ride? And she was like, why, sure, Jean, I would love a ride, mm -hmm. is what I imagine the interaction yeah. was between them. So they go to a bar. They have a couple of drinks. They leave the bar. And that's the last time she was seen alive. Mm -hmm. There was a rumor that um, Eugene was infatuated with her. He made an advance to her. She resisted. He stabs her several times. And she started screaming. So he cuts her throat. Blech. To stop the screaming, because obviously, <laughs> what else are you going to do? I mean, it works. <sighs> yeah. So does not stabbing someone. But Exactly. <laughs> call me crazy. <laughs> uh, so the death certificate states, quote, male subject seduced the victim to a secluded spot for his act. And I really hate that. I don't know why, but I hate that wording. He didn't seduce her. No. He forced her, I'm sure. He forced her. Yeah. It wasn't like he was like, come with me, baby. And she was like, ooh, Jean. No. Yeah. No. So don't don't romanticize this. Yeah. And I know it's not them. It's the death certificate from 1966. But. Yeah. Yeah. But honestly, I've never seen anything like that on a death certificate. The death certificate is the, the cause Manner of death. Of death. Yeah. Yes. Don't not, not the scenario yes. where it came. And how do they know? Did he say, oh, I seduced her? Like, she wasn't there to say what happened. And are we really going to take the word of a murderer? Exactly. Oh, I, she came on to me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. Anyways, that's a whole other podcast. Yeah, it is. So the homicide occur about, occurred about a quarter of a mile from Beth's house. And so Steve was like, you know, they caught this guy. How'd they get him? Police received a call at 1045 the night of the murder that there was screaming coming from an area. So they go to the bar, they talk to the bartender, and the bartender was like, yeah, Mary was here with Eugene, and they left. So they go to Eugene's house, they find blood in the trunk of his car, because once he had killed her, he had stuffed her body in the, car, in the trunk of his car and then disposed of her. Mm -hmm. He confesses to killing her, and he's charged with first-degree murder. Here's where it gets real fun, you guys. Mm -hmm. He pleads not guilty by reason of insanity, in 1954, he had asked, he was in the army, he had asked military doctors for help mm -hmm. because he said he had thoughts of slicing the throats of animals, he did kill animals, and he said he might hurt a woman. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. did nothing. Pretty much laid it all out for them and nothing. He literally said, did I want to murder women. Mm -hmm. I, I have these thoughts. And they were like, that's really unfortunate. Anyway, here's your deployment. Yeah. I mean, Mary could have, anyways. Yeah. So then Steve goes, this guy's got the markings of a serial killer, especially with the <laughs> animals. Mm -hmm. He does, Steve. That's right. And I would be willing to bet that he was either obsessed with fire or he wet his bed. Mm. Yep. At the trifecta. Yep. Yep. July 1966, so just a couple of months after Mary's death, he is found not guilty by reason of insanity, committed to a state mental institution in Waupon, Wisconsin. Don't worry, though. He got released in the early 1970s, moved to mm -hmm. Alabama, and died in 2002 at the age of 65. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's great. Yeah. So <clears throat> what did he serve then? Somewhere around 15? Not even. 20 years at the most? Not No, because he committed the crime in 1966, 
released oh. in the early 70s. Oh, oh, he didn't oh, even you're commit right. 10 years. I was looking at 1954. That no, was when he was in the military. Yeah, okay. he didn't yeah, yeah. even serve 10 years for That's... killing a woman. Like, with yeah. confirmed, he has confirmed mental issues. Yeah. Didn't even serve 10 years. No. And I wonder if there's any speculation. I meant to, like, look him up and see if there was any stories about him. Mm -hmm. But I want because I wonder if he ever did anything else. He had to have. He, he had, had to have. have. You don't start out killing somebody that brutally, mm -hmm. stabbing her multiple times and slitting her throat. Yeah. You don't do that right away. No. You work up to that. Right. Because, yeah, obviously with all the animal stuff. So he's got this background. Yep. He's got mental illness on top of it. Yep. And then, um, which actually what that could be part of it. Life. Yeah. What his childhood was like. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, there's he. I would bet money that he has done this before. That's the yeah. only time he got caught. And I bet he did it since when he got yep. out. Yep. I would wonder. Like I'm sure you were alluding to this. I wonder if there's any unsolved murders. Uh, yeah. In Alabama. Like in where Alabama. He lived. Mm -hmm. From 1970 or, or whatever. Along the trail from Wisconsin to Alabama when sure. he was moving down there. Check yep. maybe mid 70s. Yeah. Women stabbed, throat slit. Yep. Anyways. Yep. Oh, it's great. Okay, uh, so now we move on to Amy, and she arrives at the location. She said there's a lot going on. She said there's a lady here who's giving her a bad vibe, claiming to be death or associated with death. And then she said there's a jerk, and he's not happy she's here. He said something to her about stabbing her in the eye with needles. So good start. Mm -hmm. She walked in the living room and she said somebody kept yelling dire over and over again. Dire, dire, right. dire. She said there's somebody in the house who is affected by the energy. She said it's making them disoriented. They can't function. Um, and it's making them feel sick and feel drained. And if you remember, that's everybody, mm -hmm. especially Beth. She said mm -hmm. she really feels sick and drained. Mm -hmm. She can't have, she just doesn't have any energy. Yep. Amy said that death lady is happy. She said she seems excited and enthusiastic and she wants Amy to go upstairs. And she tells Amy she has a lot of business in this area, which Amy says assumes that means a lot of people have died or die around there very often. Mm -hmm. And if you think, Clayton mm -hmm. lost a lot of family, Nine members, family members in a sh short period of time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Amy had a really tough time with this walk. She got to yeah, the top of the stairs and she was like, <clears throat> leaning on the banister at an end table like she was going to be sick she mm -hmm. was exhausted <coughs> and i think Sorry. did she say oh my god i think i might have to leave soon yeah, yeah. she said i'm gonna have to leave soon um and then amy does a voiceover and she talks about how most people think of the green Re grim reaper as this kind of skeletal person thing but she said death can project itself any way it wants to. And she said, for some reason, it's showing itself to Amy as a short woman with a wide hat. Mm -hmm. So the woman that she saw is actually death. Mm -hmm. So then they go into the master bedroom. Remember where nobody sleeps because they're afraid of that. And she said, it's really hard to breathe in there. She said, lots of crying, hyperventilating, freaking out. Mask Matt asks if she's referring to the living. And Amy said, oh, yeah, bad, yeah, bad stuff all around in here. So then we go into Jeanette's room, and remember, Jeanette's the oldest daughter who gets the bruises, mm -hmm. and she said, mm-hmm, death lady's a lot in here. She comes <laughs> in through the door in the closet, and she said, the creepy guy comes in here, too. Um, Matt asks if anybody has seen him, and Amy says, well, he's pretty fucking strong, so yeah. <laughs> she said, Amy sees a girl, a teen, who is getting choked. And she assumes it's creepy man choking her. Mm -hmm. He is influencing this girl, putting bad thoughts in her head to do things to herself that are not good. And this made me wonder how many people who have taken their own life did so because they were haunted or being influenced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes me think. One line that Amy said that I absolutely loved, it was probably my favorite line she's ever said. She said, death cannot intervene. It can only watch and wait. Mm. And I thought that was so cool because, mm -hmm. you know, you think death isn't there to, to be malicious. It's just waiting for you mm -hmm. to die. Yeah. It can't kill you. Mm -hmm. It's just waiting. Anyways, um, Matt asks, why is creepy guy doing this? Choking the girl, you know, influencing her. And Amy says, because he's an evil lunatic. Mm -hmm. She thinks that she has to leave soon. 
because the guy is touching her and making her feel sick. And Matt asks if this is something he does to the living too. And Amy said, yeah, it's possible. Because again, mm-hmm. this guy's really, really strong. And yeah. she says that a couple of times, how strong this person is. Mm-hmm. Well, ghost entity, not person. So then we go to the basement and Amy is, oh my God, she's really struggling. You can even see her. She's like, she's whimpering as mm-hmm. she's going downstairs. Yes, she whimpered and she moned a lot. Yep. She, she was she, in a lot of pain. She and was a lot really of struggling. Illness. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So she says the energy down here, it's almost like you can grab it. It's so thick. She said the creepy guy from upstairs likes it down here too. He just likes it everywhere. Like <laughs> anywhere where people are and he yeah. can like influence them. Yeah. That's his jam. Yeah. He said he's influencing real living people and he's really good at making physical connections with people. Very strong. Um, and he's making them all sick. So then we go outside and Amy says when she first arrived, she saw a very different structure than this one. She said the structure seemed large. She thinks it had bricks. And she said, there's a guy who's really agitated. He's very high strung and feels like this is his territory. And he had to fight really hard for it. She said he's not dealing with his death well. She said he died from died from a stroke or a heart attack. A heart attack. Um, she asks how the male died and he said a death camp so this must be a different male from the work like the poor farm because that seems like what a death what they would think of that yeah camp. yeah so then we go inside and we're back in the basement and i assume that they're just breaking up the walk i assume that amy didn't but she might have taken a break from the basement gone outside and gone back to the basement mm-hmm um she then she sees a man and a woman the man is the creepy guy and she said it's so bad they knew each other when they were alive she said the woman is always trying to get away from him still even in death amy says that her heart is right the the woman's heart is racing because she's got to get away from him she's really stressed out amy thinks that the woman died here and amy saw knives she said she saw somebody messing with knives Hmm. She said the creepy guy didn't die that long ago. He was maybe in his early 50s, does not like animals, hates animals. He said children are pests. Women are pests. They're bad, evil, evil creatures. She sees a five and a four. She said, so maybe 54. Mm -hmm. Um, And then she said he's evil and he wants nothing good for anybody. Then we go to the sketch and she, she said there were two main entities um, that she drew. She said the first one was a creepy man choking the living teenager in the house. And then she also showed uh, drew how death showed herself to Amy. And Amy states right away. So we go to the reveal with Beth and Clayton. Amy states that she wasn't looking forward to the walk. <laughs> she said as soon as she walked through the door, she heard someone yelling, die or die or die or upstairs. She said she got so sick up there. She felt drained. She felt horrible. Beth again reiterates, she said, I get a lot of headaches and she gets so tired. She doesn't want to do anything. Beth Mm -hmm. says she has no get up and go. (laughs) And then Clay also says that the kids get stomach stomach aches and headaches. And then Steve asks, well, you know, Beth, tell us about, you know, this has followed you. And Beth said, yeah, she's felt this way in the last two places they lived. She said it starts out little and then it intensifies to the point where it gets physical and they have to leave. Beth starts crying and Clayton starts crying and then they have to stop recording mm-hmm. because Beth gets up and Clay gets up. They're both crying. They come back to the bed, the bed. They come back to the, <laughs> to the, what kind of show is this? <laughs> <laughs> this was a very special episode where, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they come back to the table and this Steve got me here because they're both like, I'm so sorry. And Steve yeah. is like, I don't give a shit about the cameras. Right. <laughs> He's like, you need to stop. You tell me. Yeah. I'm just like, God, Steve, like you can tell too, he is like genuinely concerned for these yes, people yeah. and he genuinely cares. And he's like, I'll give a fuck about the cameras. Yeah. Like, fuck them all. Yeah. Like if you need a break, we'll stop for an hour. We'll stop yeah. for a minute. However long you fucking need. <laughs> yeah. I know. Sweet. And then Beth says, it was just really hard talking about those places. And Steve says, that's okay. That's why we're here. Mm-hmm. I know. Steve. I would love to know more about what happened in those two yeah. places, but I'm, I wouldn't ask her because she doesn't want to talk about it. But and Clay is, yeah. Which, I would maybe by the ask way, Jeanette. if Beth or Clay would like mm-hmm. to come on and talk about this some more we'll with us, here. we would yeah. love it. I love you guys so yeah. much. I really love this family. Yeah, I do too. They're probably one of my favorites, mm-hmm. honestly. Mm-hmm. 
Um, Beth says, um, you know, before they stop, Clay just breaks down. He goes, I was so excited to have my own home. Mm-hmm. You know, you can tell he wants so much for his family. And mm-hmm. he's, you know, I'm sure it's the whole, I can't protect them. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you protect your family from something you can't see? Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. Beth said the the previous places they lived, there were always lots of shadows. And she said she would see the shadows reach out for the kids. Oh, God. And that to me is... Amy asks if if this kind of stuff has happened throughout Beth's life. And Beth says, yeah, it has. And that's when I was like, I bet she's a physical medium. She's something, but they never go into it. No, they don't. Amy says you have abilities because yeah. Steve asks if the creepy guy is following Beth. Mm-hmm. And um, Amy said it could be he's attracted to her because she has abilities. And then mm-hmm. we never hear more. Yep. And maybe she told Beth about him and Beth didn't want to share. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. So Amy said... There are two main entities in the house that she's most concerned with. And first, she talks about the female. She said she's deaf. She interacts directly with the living, wanted Amy to go upstairs. Um, and Amy thinks um, she's causing a lot of the living stress. People see people would see her as a silhouette with a hat. And if you remember, I believe it was Jeanette who said that she saw a man with a hat. So it could have been mm. her. Mm-hmm. Um, when, after Amy mentions death, Steve asks Clay how many people he's lost in the last year and his voice breaks with every single person he lost. You really can't even understand him. His aunt, his Uh, uncle, his cousin. mm -hmm. So then they show sketch one of the woman Mm -hmm. and they show it to her and Clay starts sobbing. Yeah. And he, you can't even understand. He has to talk in gasps. And yeah. he said, do you have the picture of my mom? They're I identical. Know. I got I literal chills. I know. I did too. And I sobbing, just yeah. crying. Yeah. Because he, oh my God, I wanted to hug him so much. They're identical. Yeah. And they'll they'll be wherever Amy puts our stuff because she's yeah. she does that. But. <laughs> in the video, it'll be right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you can just tell like Amy is just like so like they both feel for them. And and Amy said, I don't think this was done in a malicious mm-hmm. manner. She said she thinks that death is acknowledging what happened by taking on this familiar guise. Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't done to be malicious because honestly. Personally, I don't think death is good or evil. Right. It's death just, just is. doing its job. Yeah. It doesn't, it's not like a spirit where it's, it's mean. It just exists. Mm-hmm. And to death, maybe the fact that, you know, his mother was the, he was closest to his mother mm-hmm. or she was the most recent loss. That's the form that death took on. Mm-hmm. And just to, what, just to get attention. Yeah. Because if it showed up with a, as a skeleton and a hood with a sickle, um, it wouldn't mean anything to that family specifically. Right. But, but showing now, up looking like mom. Grandma or sure mom. Did. Yeah. Oh, Clay. I mean, it was honestly like he was struggling. It was, yeah. It was heartbreaking. It was. Heartbreaking. It was, it was hard to watch. And and when he when he shows the picture and they show Amy, she's just like got a I hand know. over her face and she's like floored. I know. I And when they showed the picture of this woman, you guys, I my jaw dropped. Mm-hmm. I literally gasped. Mm-hmm. And this was before... We saw um, Clayton's mom. Mm. It was just so jarring, this mm-hmm. picture of death. Mm-hmm. Very, like, high pronounced mm-hmm. cheekbones, long face, no eyes. Mm-hmm. It looked like a woman, except for the eyes. Mm-hmm. Even Beth goes, I don't like the eyes. Mm-hmm. Same Beth, I don't either. Yeah, and he, um, uh, Steve gave her a little flashlight. And so yes. she could, she could light, light up the picture and hold it real close to her eyes so she could see it. I loved that. That yeah, was sweet. God, Steve. <laughs> so then Amy also encountered a male. She said, this guy is no good. He was a bad person when he was alive. He's still a bad person now. Um, Amy's opinion is that he's an evil lunatic. She said she initially ran into ran into him in the kitchen chasing a female. Um, this carried over from when they were alive. So almost like it was residual mm-hmm. um, where she's running from him. That was me, not Amy. Um, she said she Amy experienced her death in her heart or chest area, and Amy was being shown a lot of knives. The only clear thing that Amy got from him is that he hates animals and that women are evil. 
um, she got two numbers from him, five and four, and she said they're extremely important to him. And that's where Steve talks about the murder of Mary and says in 1954, Mm -hmm. Gene reached out in the army and asked for help. Mm -hmm. He told them he had slashed the throats of animals and wanted to do that to a woman. And they were like, that's cool, bro. But bye. Yeah. So um, Amy says that he can't attack the living. People would see him. And Amy says he just wants to torment people. Mm -hmm. Um, And then Amy said that she had a sketch done of what he's doing to a living female. And Amy thinks the crazy evil man is focused on Jeanette. And it shows her, it shows a a girl laying in bed and Mm -hmm. the man is over um, choking her. While death is on the side. Mm -hmm. It's so eerie. It's really creepy. It's so creepy. Um, And, you know, she tells him his intentions are the same intentions he had when he was alive. To do harm. Mm -hmm. To hurt people. So this is actually, like, the easiest to fix it that I'd ever heard. And they probably (laughs) edited so much out. But essentially, all they really need to do is find a really big, bad, scary male medium to come in and kick his ass out. Mm Mm-hmm. Once they've done that, they'll set up a barrier around the property to keep out the dead. And then um, Steve asked, will death leave when, you know, once that's gone? Like, how do they get rid of death? And she said, once that guy is out, death is gone. Mm -hmm. So the follow-up, Beth and Clay decided to move. And Mm -hmm. Beth is feeling better, and the activity has not followed them. That's good. Yeah. But this one just got me right in the feels. I know. I know. I did note one thing. Um, before they were done with the uh, reveal, before Amy talked about what needed to be done, mm-hmm. Steve said about this murder guy, if he was alive today, I'd kick him right in his friggin' ass. <laughs> I was hoping he said balls. That would hurt more Well, maybe he ass. did say balls. He's, yeah, it was friggin' beep. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I think balls would hurt more than ass, especially for men. Just kick him that's right true. in his friggin' balls. Yeah. And that's cut him off. <laughs> I know. This guy, well, he was... Ugh. This yeah. is a good one. Yeah. I really hope they found some peace. I, I, I hope too. they did. I'm sure by now, I mean, Beth is probably fully blind. This was seven oh, years ago. Yeah. 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 I'll have to search around the- um, The internet? The, the uh, yeah, Facebook groups and see if she's in any of them. Mm-hmm. Your hair looks cute today, Thanks. by the way. It's this nice is called curly. Megan watched it, washed it, and then went to bed because she was so sick. She couldn't stand anymore. Well, it looks really cute. It's nice, big, full curls. I love it. Thanks. <laughs> Especially when you maybe flip she's it born there. with it. <laughs> maybe it's influenza. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny! How do you get lush hair? Well, <laughs> I throw up a few times. I throw up and shit out <clears throat> my ass. And here we go. <laughs> As opposed to shitting out anywhere else. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> really, I shit out my mouth. <laughs> That's. It's like a personal gross. <laughs> I mean, this took a turn. I was not expecting. T- we're gonna have to trigger warning. Talk about barf. Trigger warning. Fecal and barf. Yeah. So, do you want to tell us? Oh no, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to, to to ask me to tell you <laughs> what's going on next week? Do you want to tell us? Was oh, that's you. Uh, <laughs> yes. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone, for this chaotic uh, ride that we call this podcast. (laughs) Amy, what are we expecting next week? Well, next week, we are going to be recapping the episode called Death and Dolls. It is uh, all the way back to season one, episode four, originally aired on October 14th, 2011. Oh, it's my birthday and your birthday. Yeah, it's close to just Both three days, four it's days like, away from it's my It's like birthday. right in the middle of our birthday. It is. It is. So um, our listener, the Scarlet and Grey Witch, who was, we talked about her and her dog on the last episode because they joined mm-hmm. us on YouTube. YouTube. I, I had a brain fart there. Um, <laughs> anyway, she suggested to us via Twitter that we should do this one because she thought we would have some things to say about it. And boy, do we. I just watched it again. I didn't watch the whole thing. I started watching it again yesterday and I was like, oh dear Lord. So because um, this listener wanted to know what Megan and I thought, we're going to do this a little bit different. I'm still going to present it. I'll take the notes and do the pictures and all that. But I'm a, Megan's going to watch it too. And that way she can pipe up and make her own jokes about this 
which will be really rare because (laughs) it never happens i'm usually so quiet (laughs) amy's like can you please participate in the podcast and i'm like i'm sorry (laughs) oh yes okay so it's time for an alanism alanism would you like to throw me a number Yes, Between let's do number six because that was the season that this episode was. Oh, good. Okay. Number six. You know what? This is really bizarre. When I opened up the document and I started flipping through it, that's the one that I read. That's the one that I saw first. And then I fl- I scrolled all the oh way down to the bottom. God. And then you said six. I scroll up and it's that one. Wow. That's bizarre. That is bizarre. Yeah. I don't know. Alan, what the- are you here? <laughs> yeah. He is. He is. He's always here. Walk right in here. They're right there. <laughs> Why so, am I showing him what a microphone looks like? He probably invented them. He's like, please, I got this. <laughs> it's not that old. <laughs> um, okay, I don't know what this means. I don't know what it's in reference to. Okay. But here it is. Good segue. Yeah. My moral staunch hood. That's it? Yeah. Okay. I, I'm sure there was a situ- uh, a, you know, a, a conversation, yeah. and that's just how we... How we ended Maybe it? Jackie would know. Jackie, if yeah. you're listening, let us know what the hell that means. Yeah. But uh, it sounds like something nothing. he would say. Yeah. Oh, that Alan. Oh, Alan. Oh, you crazy Alan. Oh, Alan. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, I didn't say before this. Um, for any of you who are new here and don't know, uh, Alanisms have nothing to do with Amy Allen. No. Alan is my father who passed away in 2019. And he was... Uh, Radio guy, TV guy, broadcasting. He's in the Broadcasting Hall of Fame here in Minneapolis. And um, maybe I'll do a post on him at some point and just I think you put should. his picture up and a yeah. little background on him and stuff. Yeah, I'll do that. I think you should. Anyway, The world yeah. deserves to know. Yeah. So, at any rate, yeah, he said weird things. He, um, he had, in his later years, memory issues. And I don't know if it was dementia or Alzheimer's. He was never clearly diagnosed. But... Yeah, he uh, he said some weird things. <laughs> and then your stepmom. And then my stepmom, them. Jackie, wrote everything down. How and long he, were they married? Oh, let me see. It was a long time, wasn't it? Was it was a very long time. It was because they got married when I was in ninth grade. So you would have made me, yeah. So, oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm going to do some math here. I'm not doing math. My, you're, you're okay. So, uh, I ninth grade. So, I would have been probably fifteen, fourteen or fifteen. Yeah. So, um, that would be. Just take, <laughs> that's just not right. take, take your age now minus fifteen, and that's how many years they've been married. Oh, well, is it that easy? Thirty-eight years they were married. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's how old I am. Long time. Yeah. Longer than my mom and he were married. Oh, oh these okay. are. I have to make them still, but. Cute. They're very p- pink. And you know, I don't do pink. <laughs> I don't usually either, but every once in a while I put on something pink and it actually looks good on me. I think it's because I have I could pink see. In my face. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, that's what this is. We're not making fun of him. He no. loved it. When we're Jackie honoring him. Back. Yes. When we went to the medium. Jenny, yeah. she mm-hmm. said Amy's dad was there and she loved, he loved that she was doing the podcast. Yeah. So we thought to ourselves, self, the best way we can include Amy's dad is mm-hmm. to include him in the podcast. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's, that's what that is. we would never make fun of him. No. He's the best. And even if we did, he would love it because it's True. attention. Yeah. Yeah. He probably made fun of himself more than anybody else. He, did. he really did. He made fun of himself all the time. Yeah. So, so that's what we got for you guys this week. And yeah. Next Thank week, you. We'll be doing a little kind of a joint situation, mm-hmm. and uh, and if you and then, have then any February. after, yeah, after that, yeah. Oh, yeah. After that, will be your turn to do one. Yeah, and then we're in February. Yeah, gross. Well, actually, this one will come out February third. Oh well. Yeah. Oh. Hello, February. Hello, February. Yeah, uh, because I hate January so much. It's the fucking worst. It is kind of a sucky the worst month. month. Yeah. So gray, gloomy. Yeah. February is fucking cold, though. Oh, I know. February is cold. March is when it starts to get a little nicer, although it's uh, snowy. I, yeah, I heard on the radio, March is the snowiest month. Yeah. I hate the Midwest. I think we've had enough snow. I think so. I'm over it. I'm positive we've had enough snow. Yeah. Positive. 
positive. I don't lie. And I know we've had enough snow. <laughs> right. All right. Okay. Well, thanks, thanks everybody. everybody. See you Bye. next week. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Activity Continues podcast. We really appreciate you giving us your ears for a bit. Please reach out if you have a suggestion for which episode of The Dead Files we should cover next, or if you have a spooky story you'd like us to share on the show. We can be reached at theactivitycontinues at gmail.com or through our website or any of our socials. Links are all in the description of the show. Please feel free to drop us a note and say hi. And join us next time when The Activity Continues. The Activity Continues is produced by me, Amy, at Collected Sounds Media, and is part of the independent Collected Sounds Podcast Network. We are also proud members of the BooPod Network of super cool podcasts. Nailed it. <laughs>